Some places only give you one mascot, we give you five. Five, he said. This is the fifth mascot. The world-renowned internet show that now has become an international success, largely because of my co-host, Mike Cannon. Hello, Mike. We'll see how he does without uh, Satin over here this week. Uh, Mr. Satin's been dismissed from this show for poor behavior. However, he could be back next week. We don't know yet, do we? Depends on how the ratings go. Exactly, exactly. Depends on how he does in Louisville. Right. Well, it's kind of like that old Janet Jackson song for the Reds. One step forward, she said two steps back. They're three steps back. This team regresses like a bad tide. Yeah, they're struggling. Yeah, tide re it's a, like it regresses. The ocean? Yeah, it's like an egress. I th think we need a few of uh, the folks in the rotation and the bullpen to sort of float out with that tide. And it would begin with the man you called the single greatest addition to a baseball team in the last seven years. If you're the opponent. Jason Marquis. Yes, Jason Marquis is struggling big time. I have to say that I didn't even attempt to watch a single inning of last night's game because. <laughs> And that's pretty drastic for you, Mike. I that I is watched. very drastic. <laughs> he was warming um, up the TV for Letterman's finale <laughs> at like 8 o'clock. I, I knew coming in that Jason Marquis was pitching in the way the rest of the team has been playing. Yeah. I figured I would uh, check the score about the fifth inning, and unless they were um, hanging and, tight in there, I wasn't even going to attempt it. So. And you were, so to speak, not disappointed yeah. while being disappointed. I was disappointed, but I was... Uh, not surprised. Not surprised in yeah. the slightest. All right, they play the Giants. They win the first game. Cueto throws well, seven innings, a couple of hits, uh, a couple of earned runs, seven, uh, I think two earned runs for Cueto. He pitched very well against the Giants. And then the bottom falls off. Marquis gives, it pitches, starts a game where they give up 10. Leak starts a game, they give up 11. Desclafani starts a game, they give up 9. 30 runs in three games, Mike, for a team that came in averaging just a, t a hair over three runs a game. Just a hair over three runs a game. The last three games, they averaged 10 runs a game. That's not a recipe for success. This is horrible. This is, this is Desclafani is young, so you get what you get from him. Mm -hmm. But Leak should know better. And why Jason Marquis is still in this rotation, and we're going to get to it in a second. The longer they keep him in this rotation, the more I'm convinced they don't give a rat's patootie about winning the season. They don't. Yeah. They, you don't roll this guy out every fifth day and say, hey, we really care about what this team does. Yeah, I, I think he is definitely struggling, and I don't see I, – I questioned when they signed him, like, what is, what is the purpose here? But, you know, you want – you always want to try to bring in some AAA guys when you have an open spot and have some depth. Uh, and I don't think they anticipated that the young guys would come along as quickly as they have. But how you could say Marquis is the guy we're going to keep in the rotation when Lorenzen and Iglesias pitch so well is beyond me. And John Moscott at AAA has like a 2.03 no. ERA. I mean, he's 23 years old. So you've got three options there to plug in. And Brian Price's comments were um, very bizarre, to say the least, after last night's Which game. he said, what, what did Price say after last night's? So he, he said about uh, Marquis here, let me pull it up. Um, those are tough questions when you're struggling. You've lost five in a row, and during those five games, you've had some really, really poor pitching performances from our starting pitchers. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he recognizes that. Uh, those questions, the question you asked is a reasonable question. It's not insensitive or ill-timed. It's a legitimate question. Who the hell is he that's, to pass that's, judgment that's, on questions? That, that's what I thought. That's what I thought when he, he said. He can't even do his own job. Now he's telling people well, how to yeah. ask questions. But it, it isn't insensitive or ill-timed? Does think, anybody want to hear the coach of any team, unless it's your 7-year-old, saying something like that? Exactly. Insensitive or ill-timed? It was, it was timed a month ago. And insensitive doesn't matter anymore. I think, you know? he's, uh, I mean, I think he's talking about the question. He's trying to be tiptoe on eggshells after the uh, right, giant but tirade. But so then he says, he goes on to say, we've got a bunch of young pitchers too. I'm asking a lot of Mike Leak and Cueto to eat up the innings. We're trying to protect Lorenzen and Iglesias and DiSclefani to a certain extent. What Jason provides us is important, but it is important also that he performs the way I know he can, the way he did early in the year. We always have to put the best team on the field, and I think when he's throwing the way he's capable of throwing, he can be part of a good starting rotation, but it needs to start getting better. When was he, when, runs in his last two starts. He's when, doing a when, hell of a job. When was he last throwing a, a capable as, as... 2003? Yeah. yeah. During I mean, Bush's <laughs> first administration. Right. I mean, it, that's just a ridiculous statement, and it just shows that he's lost touch with reality to me. I, I, I mean, the things he's saying now are just misguided and flound, you know, they don't have any purpose. I think Marquis had maybe one good start 
and a couple of okay starts at the at the early part of the season. I think he had that one game that he won where they scored like 16, 16. runs, and yeah. he still gave up like seven runs well, in that yeah, game. Yeah, he gave up a grand slam. And then it came we back had two, to, We had two grand slams to the, win. The next game, he got like nine runs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only reason he does not one and six or something like that is the fact that they, they have scored him a ton of runs other than last night. And don't kid yourself, I think there's some undercurrents on that team that are really fixing to boil over here. Did you hear what Cueto said after the game oh, yeah. on, on Monday night? He said, basically, he said, I did my part. I'm just waiting for the rest of the team to do theirs. Yeah. That's basically what the guy said. <laughs> so it's like, if you're going to have your best pitcher, arguably, the guy that's going to be, that, that could be on any other club, a Cy Young contender, not on this mess. Um, when he's saying stuff like that, then you know that there's other people saying the same thing. Of course, yeah. the other side of that is is most of the other guys aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. So. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Cueto, he's had this problem going back for a couple of years now where he gets no run support. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the, the thing that concerns me the most is the way this team is built, it's the guys who you're going to have for a few years who cannot hit with runners in scoring position. Right. And, I, and I'm not a big... Runners in scoring percentage, batting average guy. I think that that it all averages out and comes out in the wash, kind of in the end. But they have like a mental block on it. I mean, it's like no one can do it short of Votto and Phillips. Everyone else, and part of it is they don't, they're not hitting in general. I mean, their batting averages are low. But well, they're, I think they're I think they're hitting 238 as a team, or they were going into last night. But with runners in scoring position, they were hitting 170. Yeah. Billy Hamilton was hitting 102. Yeah. With runners in scoring position. And, and that will, I, I got to think that that's going to come a little bit closer to the norm, a little bit closer to their regular batting average. Norm on well, they're sinking. Uh, last last but, week I looked at it and they were 30 point, 25 points below the next lowest team and they've gotten worse. They've gone yeah. down 20, 15 points. Well, and they're, they're playing the Royals who have like the best. They had 300. Average. Did you see yeah, that? They had 300 with runners in scoring I mean, position. It's almost not <laughs> they hit fair. They way better. I know. And th that just makes it seem like there is no point. But, if, but you're right. We, we can carp on. On, on Jason Marquis all we want, and he deserves it. But until they start hitting the ball, it doesn't matter who's out there on the mound. It yeah. really doesn't. Oh, yeah. I, I, I completely agree. And the inconsistency is the biggest thing. I mean, they cannot manufacture runs. They're waiting on home run balls. And, and those don't come when you face good pitchers. They don't, those come off, off mistake pitches. Well, the only person hitting home runs right now is Todd Frazier. I mean, he's the only guy that you look at. Votto's not hitting home runs. Votto's in a slump. Votto's in a big slump. Phillips is the king of singles. Uh, the catcher can't squat, which means that he can't he can't play every day, which means he can't get into a hitting rhythm. Jay Bruce, you know, God bless him, I got a better chance of going up there and hitting a home run than he does. So it's kind of like, what do you what do you got? You're, you're you're left with this this mismatch. But I do agree, if you want to at least give the semblance that you care about what's going on, and you want to give the fan base a feeling like something is happening. They have to extract Marquis, and they have to put Iglesias out there and let him pitch till his arm falls off, and then go find somebody else. You know, keep Moscott down there. And as soon as Iglesias shows like he's huffing and puffing in July, if you're still in it, there's an answer. If it's not, go out and get somebody. But what are they? They're, they're nine games out right now, so it's not like what are we saving all this stuff for? You know? Yeah, I mean, you got plenty of time left, but yeah, you, have nine to start, more. you have to start playing. You have to start turning things around, and. You know, I think one of the other things that, that Price said somewhere in his, uh, his long uh, comments was, you know, it's still early, but we can only say that for so long. I mean, I think you're, you're basically a quarter of the way into the season at this point. So you've got a lot of time left, but you don't have a lot of time to screw around and just hope the bullpen's going to get better. And, you know, that, that's one of the things that concern me most about some of the things that, uh, as we went on in some of the things that uh, Price said was, he's sort of like throwing up his hands. He's like... Um, We've got a tremendous ball, defensive ball club. There are a lot of areas to improve upon, but it starts with expectations. What we expect of ourselves, and it's early in the season, but we're going to, st to say that in a little bit, that it, and it's not going to be that early. We need to play much better baseball, and we have enough talent to do it. It just needs to happen, and we've got to do it collectively. Yeah, but where's it? Where, that's not, that's like a pipe dream. Right, it is. Let's well, just hope it happens. Who, who, who in the, who in the that's right That's a philosopher. Mind, if, you know, who's going to play, who's going to play better? Who's going to play better? Your, your, your catcher, like I said, can't play. Votto is Votto. He's got OBA. On-base percentage is good. Same with Phillips. I mean, the shortstop was hitting. Third baseman is hitting better. You know, the blanks are center field, right field, mm -hmm. uh, to a lesser extent catching, because Peña has acquitted himself well, I think. He's, but is he a 650-plate appearance guy? I don't think so. And your left fielder didn't hit for the first five weeks. And 
I don't know what he's done this week, but he's not hitting as, as, as well as he hit two weeks ago. So, I mean, who, who's, going, who's going to play better? I mean, where, where is that going to come from? It's, it's basically Billy Hamilton and Jay Bruce. Yeah, I think you've got to get more production from Hamilton and Bruce. And then it sounds like Mesoraco may be just a week or two away from, from being back. He actually did some catching drills. Um, you know, there you go. that's a novel concept that your catcher can actually get down into a catcher squat. Um, but they have to get production. And, and what, what is so, I think, madding, maddeningly frustrating about this team is you go from, all right, so Vado is hitting but Bird isn't. Now Bird's hitting, but Votto isn't. Now Bruce is finally starting to come around. He, I, I think I said on the show last week that this week we'd be talking about Bruce turning it around. He had 368 with two home runs in the last week. So he's turning it around, and he missed a grand slam by about two feet mm -hmm. on Sunday that would have changed the game. So they're starting to come around one guy at a time, but just as soon as one guy comes around, then someone else falls off the wagon and can't hit the ball anymore. Because, Mike, they all approach hitting the same way. It's, it's a big bop team, and yeah. there's nobody there that you look at and say, okay, there, there's somebody who's going to move the line around, and we'll get a couple here, one here, a couple here, three here. And when you have that, that kind of roster, which they've had forever, to me, that's why you have what you have. This guy falls off when that guy starts hitting. That's what happens on a team that doesn't have the kinds of ball players that can have good OBP and keep the line moving. Well, it comes down to, I think, uh, being smart hitters and being smart as a team and thinking as a team instead of just like, well, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to flail away at the ball. And that's been their, one of the biggest problems I've seen it, when they get into close games late, especially last year, but it's, it's bad this year too. It just feels like if it's a tie game in there in the 12th inning, every guy is up there trying to end the game with a home run yeah. instead of trying to get on base, move the runner over, and even if they get him on base, they try to move him over with a bunt. No one can bunt on this team except maybe Cozart. Uh, you know, that's, that's not a good situation to be in. And you look at you kind of compare that to someone like the Royals. I mean, the Royals are the, uh, the anti-Reds. I mean, they, they don't swing for the fences. You know, y yesterday they had a guy, or not, not yesterday because I didn't watch yesterday's game, the first game <laughs> of the series, they had a guy who, with runners on first and second and two outs, drops a bunt and gets a bunt single because the Reds totally aren't expecting it. There is no way that anyone on the Reds would successfully do that. Right. Hamilton might try it, but he's going to bunt it right back to the pitcher right at the first baseman. Or into the dugout. Or into the dugout. I'm, I'm wondering, I heard this on, on uh, uh, Lance McAllister's show, Driving Home, a couple of nights ago. Should Billy Hamilton forget about trying to hit left-handed and concentrate on just hitting right-handed, which he, he bats right-handed much better than left-handed. He's only been a switch hitcher, hitter for four years. Batting practice would have, have, I mean, you can only really, everybody gets the same amount of pitches in batting practice. You're only really giving half the attention to that side of the plate as opposed to the other side. You know, why not just say, hey, it was a nice experiment. It didn't work. I'm a natural right-handed hitter. Let's see if we can't concentrate that and make me a better, better, better ball player, better hitter all around. I think that's a really uh, cool and interesting thought to consider. I mean, I, I don't know if the Reds would even think about that, but other, other switch hitters in the past have dropped their non-dominant hand. Uh, I think the idea of making Hamilton a switch hitter was partially because he gets out of the batter's box so quickly from the left-hand side, but we see what happens when he tries to do that with a bunt. He's not worried about getting the bunt down. He's worried about trying to get to first base. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that's something to consider. I think if I were the Reds, if I were the general manager, I would be considering also... You know, Billy Hamilton's great, and moving him down to the eighth or ninth spot in the batting order is one way to try to get him on track. But is it time to send Billy Hamilton down to AAA and try to get him on track there? I mean, he's got options left. You can send him down. But there's, there's just too many things wrong. Or, and to me, it seems like leadership. And I don't know how to just somebody like, and it's easy to say this after they were here, you know, they were in town with the 90 team, but somebody like Lupinella who just looks at him and says, this is all bull, you know, we're, we're not putting up with this anymore. I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to take you out, and I'm going right. to this guy in, and I don't care. Right. Price is just, 
It's insensitive? Well, he's, 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 what is insensitive? Well, I mean, at the major league level of anything, insensitivity is part of the game. And you're going to have to live with it, and you're going to have to have somebody get in your face and say you're not producing. And he doesn't do that. And these guys all just sit there, and they're, they're, they're out there pressing. The, the stat on the bottom there, they lose three games to the Giants. They go into Kansas City. They don't hit one time with runners in scoring position in two nights. They leave 14 guys on base. That's just the team pressing with nobody really focused on what they're supposed to do. That's what it seems Dust, like. It's, Dusty yeah. did that. Too. He didn't get in anybody's face. And it's but the same crowd. But isn't yeah. that isn't that a product of Brian Price just being happy to have the job? Yeah. Well, right. I, I, and, I and mean, should he have the job? That's well, the bigger question. Right. Again, you know, I'm happy to have the job. You know, I you know, this is a wonder. Well, you, it, well, you, if you got a guy that maybe has had a couple of these jobs and he understands what it takes to get it done, then maybe you don't have that. But I, I that's why I, you know I was with uh, uh, with a doctor earlier today. He says, "How soon do you think Barry Larkin will be here?" I said, Barry Larkin will be the manager of this team when Walt Jockety is no longer the general manager. He's not going to come in and, inherit, and just say, oh, I'll take everything the way it is. He, that's, he, he doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, got, uh, you think about it from Brian Price's standpoint. He's, he's probably a puppet. He's, got, he's happy to have the job. He has a former major league manager as his third base coach, which means he's got, he's got his automatic replacement sitting there, right there, when it's going to happen. There was a large camp down there that wanted Riggleman to get that job. Uh, he's, saying, he's, he's not going to do anything to rock the boat. He's not going to go out. He's not going to challenge Walt Jockety. The guy you haven't heard from in the last three months is Castellini. Where's that guy been? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, to me, if I'm Brian, if I'm Brian Price, I'm, I am walking on eggshells. I don't think he should be fired. This, this mess isn't his fault. But it's also when you have somebody that behaves like, I'm happy to have the job, what you're going to have is a guy who behaves like, he's happy to have the job, not somebody that's going to go out there and make changes. Moving him, Mike, moving Billy Hamilton to eighth in the order, Brian Price probably figured that that was radical. He probably stayed awake. Do yeah. I, whose, whose permission do I have to ask to get this thing done? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it's sort of like robbing Peter to pay Paul because he moved Cozart to number one, and all of a sudden Cozart goes straight down. Mm -hmm. He's got to change his approach. He's not used to hitting there. He hasn't done it in, in a couple of years. Although when he last hit number one in 2012, they were extremely successful offensively. That was the last time they showed any semblance of life as an offense. Right. Uh, but I think that was more of a factor of Ludwig and Frazier got really, really hot for about six weeks and just carried the team. Everyone else stayed solid, too. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like, I mean, like what we had with Bird. Bird gets really hot. And Vado and everyone else yeah. can't get on base, so it's like, okay, well, we got another solo home run from Marlon Bird. We'll score one run this game, maybe two. And this is maybe you read this one, you, but he said Price said last night, we haven't been when they were talking about runners in scoring position. We haven't been great in those environments to this point, but we do have guys who have been very successful in those situations in the past. Huh. What? Who? <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Well, yeah, they all play in the major league level. At some point, they probably hit in the clutch. But when you're saying that at this point in time, when they go over for the series with runners in scoring position, I want what I want is a guy who's pissed. I want a guy who's going, I don't know what we're going to do, but this is just killing me, you know. But he's just sitting there trying to be nice. But it's like, I don't want a nice manager of any team. Well, what the, options does he have, level. Matt? I mean, it's like Mike said. He yeah. said, well, yeah. I'm not saying he has a, a, a magic bullet that he can put in, but I don't want him to talk like that. No, I, Talking no. like that means we're never going to get out of this. I, if I, he's just going to be I nice agree. to him and say, all right, boys, go out there. I know you're good players. I, you know, I, that's never going to be it. But to your point about sending Billy Hamilton down, to put who in? Who? They got nobody to put. There's nobody in that organization that can play that position. Nobody. They have nobody. They have nobody at Triple A AA or Double A that could come up right now and 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 hit any better than Billy Hamilton. Brendan Bosch. What? No. Yeah. Why don't they play him? Because he stinks. <laughs> oh my God. He stinks. No, he doesn't get a chance. He, he does hit not 30, get a You know what? He hit 30 <laughs> home runs in Triple A last year. That's like breaking 100 stories in Paducah, Kentucky. You come up here and you break he two. He doesn't have 30 at bats this season. I mean, yeah. he doesn't get that, a chance. You know what that's play. called? Well, I Thank do, God. I think, I, I think, no, but what I think it reminds me of Inglésias. I'm not saying I, th this team might just not be good enough to be what anybody, what Cincinnati people hope they are. But I, what I want. 
from a manager. I'm talking about what I see in his eyes and when he talks. Is I want him to say, I don't care. This doesn't work. I'm going to bring in the kid. I don't care if the kid's not ready, but this isn't working. And then the, the send, that's the kind of thing, I think, that people like Lou Pinella send a message. They're like, it doesn't matter who you are. Well, if you put if you start performing the way this team is performing, you let them know we're not putting up with it. We'll bring in the whole Louisville Bat team if that's what it needs to be. But you guys aren't doing it. And then they get a message. They're like, oh my God, you know, I'm not just going to be you know patted on the butt and said go out there and do your best every day. Right. That's what. The, that, regardless, even if you bring up somebody like Brendan Bosch or whoever and put them in there for three, two, three weeks. Billy, Billy Hamilton gets the message, and everybody else who saw that happen gets the message. But they're not getting any message now. They're getting, well, these guys have done well in the past, and we're just hoping that they come around. <laughs> you know, that's what I mean. You, you don't, not, he's not sending them any kind of message that this is intolerable. Yeah, I mean, Bosch isn't an all-star by any means, but he's, he can't be any worse than Hamilton. And, well, and what are you going to sit Bruce, and what are you going to lose? Well, but Nothing. What my, he, right. well, A, he's not a kid, and, and, and yeah, B, he's like 30. And, and, and well, B, right, but. I don't, I don't, again, I don't know what, what, you get, what, you, what you get from that. But the theory that you're proposing, I'm all for if you've got something or somebody. There are no kids to play anywhere in this organization. Jesse Winker, last I checked, was hitting 238 in AAA, uh, double A. So to bring him up here and have him hit, 160. I don't know what the difference is between him hitting 160 and Billy Hamilton hitting 160. I, I, I but I, like I say, I think the point is, is that you show the team that's here, you're not going to put up with this. And I'm not. It might not work. No. But this being nice to them, I don't think is ever going to be the answer. I think they have to be shown yeah. that we're not putting up with it. Yeah. This is intolerable. Yeah. You're stinking up the field, and we all know it. You should know it. And unless you do better. It's not going to be tolerated, and and that's it, it. Might not be the answer, but if if you just make that move and you show them that you're pissed and that you're not going to take it, and that everybody else has to step up or they're going to be on the block too, you know, then they change it. But maybe a guy who's making a million a month doesn't care and he knows he's going to get his money. I, I I don't know, but I think they have to show them, and that's what a guy like Pinella or whoever would do. And you know, he just shows them that's it. You stink. You've been stinking up the, the diamond for the last few weeks. You're out. I'm bringing somebody else in. I don't care if he's a kid or a, a minor league player. Well, I, That's it. I think it's hard because they know who Brian Price is. I mean, Brian right. Price has been there with right. the Dusty regime. They're, they're you just comfortable. You just don't change who you are. Because, you know, I mean, you are who you are. But, and, but right. doesn't and a I lot think, of that. I think the only way it works is if you make the players who we have now understand they have to change, and I don't think what they're doing is doing that. But doesn't a lot of that have to do with who owns the club? Well, I mean, this is very interesting what's going on. By picking Brian Bryce, I think that's Well, yeah, yeah. Here's, I, think, I think what's going on, that you, run, you, you, either, you can do one of two things. You can run the team as a business or as a fan. And I think he does a great job of running the business side of the Reds as a businessman. If you walk in down there, you've got everything yeah. you want. You've got great food, you've got great ambiance, there's a lot of other things to do besides watch the core product. But when you get to the core product, it almost seems like he operates this thing as a fan. And that's why you had the contract to Votto, and that's why you had the contract to Phillips and to Bruce. And that's why you have the blind loyalty that he apparently has to Walt Jockety, where all of what's been going on over the last two years, there are very few managers, I think, that would have survived, certainly rookie managers that would have survived. I mean, he gave, he gave the hook to Baker and said, I'm changing the culture of the team, and all he did was give the hook to Baker. Yeah. I, just, I sense there's, the, the team is being run two ways, and he's got to be more of the business Bob Castellini and less of the fan Bob Castellini. And I think, if, I think that's, if that's when you'll get what you're talking about, about you know, yanking kids up, throwing guys up to the curb and all that, because I, I think he falls in love with all of these players. I, I agree, and I, I never understood the price thing. I mean, the Reds were a team that, a couple of years ago at least, looked a lot better, and it would be a, 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 a plum job to get. Yes. And they could have had a lot of guys who, who, would have, who, who would have wanted it. And then they just take the guy who's already in the dugout, and you're exactly right. You're trying to change the atmosphere, and you bring someone from within that atmosphere? Yeah. That doesn't make it any sense. makes absolutely no sense. Yes. Yeah, price to me just seems like the, the, the safe, like, um, he was, he was just there. Like, he never excited me when they hired him, and he, he's not done anything that I'm like... Ah, he needs to go. Um, I, I still like him better than Dusty, even though Dusty won a hell of a lot more. 
But I, yeah, I don't. But, but okay. you know, I mean, it's splitting hairs between the two. But I mean, they're basically they they come across as the same guy, and I can't really tell whether they really are. And you know, it's easy as a fan to sit and say, I want them to to, to say these guys stink and, and get them out of here. Um, we don't know what's going on in the clubhouse. We don't know. Did he pull in Jason Marquis last night and say, "Look, one more start like this, and you're done." And also, you have to think about how do you motivate people. I mean, if I go out there in my, at, with my staff and just scream at them for not doing the right, right the right thing, we see that's not going to make. We see you do that. We can see over there, Mike. That's not going to make them do a better job necessarily. <laughs> but I, I, um, you have only... to find ways to, to motivate them. You know, the the person that I would be really concerned about, and this is this this is the whole reason that, that uh, or at least a big part of the reason, uh, at least publicly, that uh, Dusty Baker isn't here, is that he wouldn't fire Brooke Jacoby, the Reds hitting coach. And what's going on with Don Long? I mean, this team can't hit at all. I mean, and they're, they're guys with proven track records. How does it take as long as it took to figure out what was wrong with Bruce's swing and to get him fixed? You know, how, how do we go through the entire year last year with Cozart hitting the way he hit and not have a good, solid major league hitting coach say, hey, you know what, if you hold your hands a little bit higher, that's the way you were swinging the, the bat two years ago when you were successful. H- how does someone not dissect and find those problems when you're at the major league level? And that, that goes back to the consistency thing. This team is wildly inconsistent on offense. And you'll get one guy who's hot, and then all of a sudden they cool down. Well, someone needs to analyze those swings and try to figure out what were you doing differently when you were hitting well that you're not doing now. And no one, I don't hear anybody calling for Don Long's head because usually hitting coaches don't get fired right. until the end of the year. And nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows who he is. He get lost in a phone booth. I mean, they, the, the hires that Price made were all guys that you're like, I don't know, who, who's... Jeff Pico, no Don Long. I mean, I think I had their baseball cards in like 1989, and they were like, right. You'd have to trade five of them for a real player. Right. Yeah. You have yeah. to trade five no, for a real The Luis only difference Canales. I think, the only, yeah. the only reason I liked Dusty Moore was because he had been through it. It, it, it. A lot of times with anybody and on any top level team, you have to look at that guy and say, you know, well, what do you know? I mean, I think that's what a lot of those players do. They look at a, at a coach and they say, what do you know? Where have you, you know, what did you ever do? Well, Dusty Baker played in the big leagues on the top level, won the World Series, you know. I think he won an MVP or something. But he, he played for winning teams, and they can, he can call upon that. Brian Price can't do that. And you're just looking at some guy who was the pitching coach two years ago. What does that mean to them? They don't know who he is, and they don't have any respect for him, right. I don't think. And now well, it's just getting worse and worse. Well, There's Bruce, nothing that they can call upon to make a change. Bruce said it takes three, it, it, it takes three years. Not, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> to Tracy, figure out how I'm no, no, Tracy <laughs> Jones. Tracy Jones said this. He said it takes three years when you get a heading coach. He said first year you're going to get to know him. Second year, you're going to get listen to see if he knows what he's talking about. Third year, you trust him. And he said that's just the way ball players think: is these coaches come and go. They don't they don't trust these coaches because they think they're just there and they're going to be gone in two years if the team doesn't win anyway. I'm going to do what I think is best for me, and that's why Stubbs probably didn't bunt. That's why Bruce doesn't hit the right. It's just they're not going to listen to anybody. Yeah. Anyway, I want to go back to a simpler place in time. As Gladys Knight sang about in Midnight Train to Georgia. Uh, in, in, May, in May of 2012, remember May t- 2012? Yes, no, you don't. Vaguely. Um, Cincinnati fan Caleb Lloyd catches both home run balls hitting consecutive at bats just three pitches apart by starter Mike Leak and shortstop Zach Cozart. Reds were playing the Braves, they won the game. Uh, the, he went to Thomas More College, uh, Caleb did. And he didn't keep, uh, keeps neither ball as he gave the infielder's ball to Nick Rise, a friend who. Had to help, he helped get tickets to the game. And then at the request of the Reds, he, he gives the pitcher, who had his first career home run, that ball in exchange for a tour of the Reds clubhouse and some autograph stuff. That would have been to Mike Leak. That was twice. Guy catches two home runs on back-to-back at-bats. How many people do you figure he shoved out of the way to do that, by the way? <laughs> he was in the first row. We saw, we, you can see it right there. I saw the replay. But we, we have a soundbite from that night from uh, Caleb. Here we go. I gave the Cozart one to my buddy, whose uncle actually like got us the ticket. So I gave him the ball because he's kind of one of the reason I was here. And then the league ball, I gave it back because I know it's league's first ever major league home run. So I decided to give it back. I just want to meet him, just shake his hand. Oh, okay, that's that's nice. That was, <laughs> you know, so he gets to the tour of the clubhouse and and uh, gives the ball back. That was Red's history, but not that this has anything to do with anything. 
But did you see the woman in Chicago catch the, uh, the home run ball? No, no. She loses, her, uh, she loses a cap. Some guy next to her has a Mets cap on. Mm -hmm. And it falls to the uh, warning track. Dante Fowler picks up the cap and throws it back up. This woman in a Cubs jersey catches it, turns around, turns her rear end of the, to the field, and wipes her butt with the cap <laughs> and throws it back on the field. <laughs> And Fowler picks it up and throws it back up, and she does it again, and then he just throws the cap away. That's funny. That's Chicago for you. Yeah. Yeah. No class in that game. No class. Standings. <laughs> Your Cincinnati Reds are now nine games out of first place, Mike. Yeah. They're fading fast. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, is they're in the same division as the Cardinals, who have, if not now, certainly one of the best records in baseball. They're not going to win this division because they don't have enough pitching to rip off enough wins in a row to win the division. Uh, I would say that probably when it's all said and done, that's where you're going to find the Reds at the end of the year. There'll be about four games under 500. I, it, it, well, obviously after losing f four in a, five in a row, it's uh, a, a low point. But I think that's tough to even imagine that from my perspective. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if I'm know, Pittsburgh, they, if, have I'm, to play a lot if I'm a Pirates fan, I'm more upset right now than if I'm a Reds fan because the Pirates, Clint Hurdle could be, he could be Gonzo here pretty soon. You should, they, they're a better team than that, but I don't know if the Reds are a better team than what that is. Well, and the Pirates are a team that, in theory, is more on the upswing than the Reds. Yes, the Reds are correct. to the point where, where a the lot Pirates of their guys... The, the Pirates are the 2008 Reds or 2009 Reds when they were you know supposed to be better and they weren't really winning what they should I, th I think they're more like the 2012 Reds. They'd already had a little bit of success uh, and, and their guys have been at the major league level for two or three years and their core is starting to really come into its prime. I mean, other than McCutcheon, most of their core guys should be like in their number one prime right, years right, right now. And McCutcheon should be your perennial MVP, and he's starting to come around a little bit, but boy, he started the year awful. And look at that, the Pirates and the Reds both closer to what the Brewers are, and the Brewers are arguably the worst team in baseball. They're closer to them than you are to second place. At least they got a new manager. Yeah, that'll fix here's, everything. Here's, here's the wild card. Not much better. When you got all those teams in front of you, that'd be a, you got to rip off eight, or eight in a row to get ahead of And that's the greatest fear. If that wild card number is what it is around the trade deadline, I guarantee you the owner will say, what can we get that will make us better? And they'll hang on to expiring contracts, and that will be the poison pill. Do you think he'll stay at that point? At four and a half? Uh, Linder bailed at four in 2000. I don't know if I don't know if he will or he won't. I think you got to look realistically. I mean, does anybody think Arizona is going to be a playoff team this year? I don't. Uh, They're ahead uh, of you. Atlanta. I mean, it, maybe. Atlanta. Atlanta looked worse than the Reds when the Reds played them. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I. I. I just don't think that they've got the pitching to uh, to get them back in this thing. And we've already gone over the hitting that it's not. There's not enough hitting. I. I think I think this thing could be this thing could be toast by the middle of June, and then what do you do if you own the team? Because you got to sell a lot of tickets and talk an all-star game up that yeah. most people can't afford to go to. Yeah. So. Well, we got the Battle of Ohio this week. Oh I mean, my! That's that's a big. Thing. I am so <laughs> sick of interleague. I am so sick of seeing the Indians. Who the hell wants to see the Indians six times in a season? Six times in a season, we got to see the Indians interleague play. Go, it needs to go away. Just leave and send us all back to where it was. Right. And we'll have balanced schedules, and we'll have real pennant races, and the All-Star Game will be more important, and the World Series will be more important. Nobody wants to see the Cleveland Indians six times a year. There are people in Cleveland that don't want to see the Indians six times in one season. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I would just say that right now the Indians have a much worse record than the Reds, so uh, if the Reds can get it together, it might be a good thing. I'm going to the Saturday game in Cleveland, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, you'll see there a good go. pitching performance on one end. From Kluber or yeah. Sclafani? Kluber. Kluber's been struggling, too, although the last time out he just yeah. dominated the Cardinals, so it could be ugly. Then he got Leak against Hector Carrasco. Is he still pitching? <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny Cueto against Hank Hector Bauer. Tor. And, hell, they don't even know who's pitching on Monday. I'm guessing. Hang on here. Yes. I'm guessing. Rizel. I think for all the girls I loved before, <laughs> I think he's on the mound on Monday. I think. Mark, and, but I hope they do the right thing with Marquis and they don't put him in the bullpen. They just give him a version of the home game. Yes. And then bring up Moscot. And, or, or well, you don't want to be insensitive. 
Why not? <laughs> I, I, or ill time. Yeah. I, Everybody I gets a trophy. I can't imagine that That's they right. would think that Marquis and the Look bullpen would be play. a good fit. Would you throw Jason Marquis on an afternoon Memorial Day game with probably 35,000 people? You better have a Mike Lacoste bobblehead night <laughs> if you want to draw that kind of. Can you imagine if they said that that dude's going to pitch on one of the rare holidays that they actually have a game here? It would be a memorial for someone, I think. Yeah. His career, <laughs> but I th that's why I think it's got to be Iglesias because he pitched last night, so he'd he'd be on track then to pitch again. I think right. I saw somewhere in one of the things that they were lining up Lorenzen to pitch in one of the games. So. I hope not. I hope it's got to be Iglesias. I, 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 so. I don't see how if you were picking between those two guys that you would pick that you would pick Lorenzen over Iglesias after Iglesias. Just I mean he absolutely dominated that one game, and then you send him to the. I just, that one just totally. They're jerking the kid around. They, they, he comes out of Cuba, so right away he's running from Fidel. You bring him over here, you give him a lot of money, and then you send him to Louisville, <laughs> where he says, "What's this? You know, it's horse racing and you know a couple of bourbon bars." And 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 then you bring him up, and he starts, and then you put him in the bullpen. He thinks he's going to be back with Fidel here, like in 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's or, like, or he's going to be taken out and beaten behind the. Right. Behind what the, did I do wrong? <laughs> yeah, we don't get taken out and beaten here. We get sent to Louisville. Yeah. I mean, what's going on? We want all our Twitter fans to send us any comments, questions, applause, jeers, uh, hashtag fifth mascot. We'll we don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers here. We That's raise right. questions we, we need, that we don't have answers to. We, we, need, yeah, we need help. We need yeah. help from our loyal streaming viewers. Right, because we want to keep this show going. Because it's going to be hard to do this show when there's like, you know, Mr. 4, Satin's people. already bagging it. It'll just be like betting on like who's going to get traded next, kind of thing. Mr. Satin's sick, right? I mean, we, well, we know that, but I mean, I mean, he's he's he physically ill right now. Is that no, right? He is. That's, yeah, that's he, what we're he, led to believe. Yeah, he got uh, the equivalent of food poisoning from watching bad baseball. So he's oh, just. Man. I mean, he watched that game last night, yeah. and he, now he just he's done. Right. He has, next time they lose five in a row, he's going to miss the show too. Right. He has he has distress in his lower marquee track. <laughs> that's it. We're done. It's the fifth mascot. We're on every uh, Thursday at 1.30, but available for your downloading pleasure. Wow. The kids call this stuff time shifted, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's huge. On 24-7 on WCCO.com. Back next Thursday, 1.30 Eastern Time, live, and anytime you want to see us on demand.